afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the virtual college fair with Penn State Montalto. I'm Carrie from Frederick County Public Libraries. And before we get started, I'd like to go over just a few things about how this session will work. This program is being presented through Zoom webinar and live streamed on Facebook. For safety, we've turned off your ability to use the microphone or the webcam. If you use the chat function to communicate, it can only be seen by the library staff and our presenter. At any time during the program, you will have the opportunity to submit your questions to today's presenter. To do so, just type your question into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. As time allows, our presenter will, will address as many questions as he can during the audience Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you have any technical difficulties or questions, please direct those questions to the chat and a library member, staff member will assist you. We will be recording the program and it will be captioned and posted to FCPL's YouTube channel and our team Discord server. Without further ado, I'd like to now introduce you to Eliel Acosta from Penn State Monalto. Welcome. Hey, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are, you do how are you all doing today? Great. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Eliel Acosta. I'm an admissions counselor here at Penn State University. I specifically work at the Monalto campus. So I've been visiting um, Frederick County for about five years now for Penn State. Uh, so I am the admissions rep for Penn State University that visits the local high schools in Frederick County. Um, so I'm kind of just glad to be here today to maybe connect with some of those students. Excellent. So um, uh, I know, do you have a presentation prepared or do you just want to talk a little bit about the school? Yeah, I can pull up a presentation. Um, let me, I have access to share my screen, correct? Yeah. Okay. And Carrie, um, how many minutes do I have for this presentation? Uh, we have until um, 10 of five, so, you know, take, uh, take your time. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's great. Um, so I'll go ahead and start. It should take about 30 to 25 minutes. Okay. Um, so Penn State University, a very vibrant campus, over 275 academic majors. 1,200 clubs, 20 campus locations. So I know I mentioned earlier today, I work specifically at the Mon Alto campus, but a lot of students are gonna know Penn State for University Park campus, uh, which is the biggest campus at Penn State. Uh, so the presentation today is gonna cover all campuses. It's all gonna be the same information in terms of the application process. Um, so it should be pretty helpful for students. But uh, when talking about Penn State, we are a world-class university. We are ranked in the 1%. Um, in 2018, we came in 58 out of 18,000 universities and colleges across the globe. Uh, a lot of our um, STEM-related fields, business engineering, are nationally ranked in the top 10. Uh, so overall, Penn State is, pure, is, is strong academically. Uh, we also our faculty to student ratio or student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. Um, so when students are looking at Penn State, uh, this can look different depending on campus. Uh, University Park, I always tell students, uh, it's a large campus, 47,000 students. Class sizes there for a freshman could be between 300 and 400 students, right? So. Uh, it can be a big jump for most students coming from high school. I, I doubt, you know, there's too many high schools out there with, with an English class of 300 students. So I always kind of tell students just to be aware of that. Uh, most students don't have an issue transitioning into that big environment. Uh, but for other students, you know, that can create anxiety or maybe it's just not the best um, learning environment for them. And that's when I encourage them to maybe look at a smaller campus. Uh, but across the board, student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1 at Penn State. Um, even at University Park after sophomore year, once students start taking higher elective courses, those class sizes shrink from uh, 300 to 400 students to about 40 to 50 students. So they do get smaller at the big campus. Uh, but then again, at other campuses like at Mont Alto, where I work at, our student to faculty ratio is a lot smaller. It's 10 to 1. 
your biggest class size there is a bio course with 50 students. <laughs> Typically, your average course is probably going to be around 16 students. So um, that size can look in many different ways, uh, depending on which campus a student is attending. Uh, but other than that, our graduation rate is 85%, retention rate is 93%. Those are pretty solid numbers. Uh, I think it's our graduation rate is 30% above the national average, and our retention rate is 12% um, above. So these are kind of just numbers that sometimes students look for at the beginning of the presentation. But I'll talk about that 20 campus system because I know it's a little bit different um, than most colleges, right? Uh, and the next slide that I have here is a, a map of Pennsylvania, or at least a graphic of, of PA. Uh, Maryland is right below. Um, so Frederick is not too far out. Uh, Frederick from Monalto is probably about an hour away. Uh, I live in Gettysburg, so I know it's not, not too much of a drive. Uh, but um, with Penn State, like I mentioned before, 20 locations. Every blue dot that you see on this map is a Penn State campus. Uh, University Park, we mentioned before, is the big campus of about 47,000 students, different nicknames. Some students call it State College, Happy Valley. Uh, the only name that we don't allow students to call it in admissions is Main Campus, uh, because we like to think that we are one university just geographically dispersed throughout the state of, of PA or the Commonwealth of PA. Uh, but every other blue dot that you see is the Penn State campus. They're all gonna range in size. So for students looking for a really small campus, uh, there are some that are as small as 500. Uh, your average Penn State campus is about 750 to 800 students. Um, and then you do have some campuses that are between 3,000 to 5,000, so more of a medium size. Uh, so again, when students apply, they're gonna choose two um, campus choices and then they'll get admitted for one. So it is just one application. Um, athletics, right? So I know Penn State is known uh, for its athletics. Football is, is big at Penn State. That's obviously University Park Division I. Um, all D1 level play is at University Park. Uh, but I tell student athletes, you know, if you don't want to play D1 or you know you're not going to be um, competing at D1 level, definitely look at some of the smaller campuses because some campuses are D3. Uh, but every campus does partake in what we call the Penn State University Athletic Conference, where we compete against one another in other D3 schools. So uh, you can still engage in athletics that way at Penn State. Uh, and obviously we have clubs and in in, in intramurals as well. Um, so again, I know it's, it's, it's different for most colleges and universities. Uh, those 275 majors I talked about earlier, you can start pretty much any major. There are a select few where you can, but pretty much any major, you can start at a smaller campus and then finish at University Park. Uh, that's known as a two plus two, uh, where you do two years at one campus and two years at your finishing campus, more than likely University Park. Uh, so that's pretty popular at Penn State. I think 60% of our students do that two plus two. A lot of students do it to save money. So for out of state, there's about $12,000 cost difference between University Park and the smaller campuses. Uh, location, right? So maybe someone from Frederick County wants to go to Mon Alto just because it's closer to home. Um, it's kind of in that realm of commuting where it's possible, but I probably would encourage, I would not encourage it since it's an hour drive. Um, and then also athletics, like I mentioned before. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Uh, Carrie, if there's any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, but like I mentioned, 275 majors, they're all split in academic colleges. So when, it, when a student applies to Penn State, they're picking an academic college. So we'll use engineering, for example. Say someone's looking at mechanical engineering, they're applying to the College of Engineering as an incoming freshman with an intended major of doing mechanical engineering. Uh, once they're at Penn State and get admitted, they have to take certain courses. Um, they have to have a certain GPA. Typically it's a 2.0, but it can differ between major. And as long as they do all that and follow um, their academic plan, they're officially in the major by the end of sophomore year. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, the only majors that you have to be at University Park for the whole entire time would be graphic design, architectural design, which is five-year degree program. Uh, but anything else that I can think of right now, on the top of my head, you should be able to start at a smaller Penn State campus. Um, 180 minors, so you can combine different things if, if you're looking to kind of create a, a different academic plan. Students can always come undecided, which is pretty 
common across all colleges. Um, so it's totally doable at, at times. But undergraduate research, um, we pour typically around $900 million in research for undergrad students. So if we have students going into biology or STEM fields and they're you know, really highly interested in research, there's a lot of great opportunities across all campuses to get involved. Um, it's not just STEM fields, right? Someone in psychology could be doing research as well. Uh, so that's something that if students are looking for at Penn State, uh, we have plenty of opportunities. Uh, we have career launching internships. So we do mock interviews um, with our career office. We do dinner adequate. So if a student ever finds themselves in a formal place with an employer or a potential employer, we kind of just give them tips and pointers on how to navigate those spaces. Um, there's um, resume workshops as well. Uh, we have one of the largest career fairs um, on this side of the country where over uh, close to 1100 employers come to Penn State into the Bryce Jordan Center and uh, we have a career fair and students walk around looking for internships and employment. Um, so again, pretty strong office at Penn State. Study abroad, students all have also have that option to do that. Um, the only tips and pointers I would give to students with study abroad uh, not just at Penn State, but in college in general, is start planning early. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is junior, senior year of college, go to your advisor and say, hey, I want to do study abroad. Um, it could still potentially be an option, but it might make your four-year degree plan into a five-year degree plan, right? Uh, so you just kind of want to make sure you know, you're, you're having these conversations early with um, your, your advisor at Penn State University. Um, the study abroad can look in many different ways. It can be a couple of weeks. It can be the summer, right? It can be a whole semester, a whole year. Um, most majors are pretty friendly with, with study abroad opportunities, but there are some majors that are gonna be a little bit more difficult to do a whole semester or a whole year. Um, so just kind of ask when you're talking to the admissions office, if this is something that you're really interested in, say, hey, is this some, is major biology something I can do um, study abroad, right? So keep that in mind. We cover 52 countries um, within our 300 programs. And then the other thing is the honors program at Penn State University, which is pretty popular. And I know we've had students from Frederick County be part at the honors, par the honors, honors program at Penn State University, highly competitive. Um, its formal name is Schreier's Honors. Uh, I think they only take about 10% of the incoming freshman class. Uh, they give you a lot of perks. So you get a $5,000 scholarship if you're in the program. Um, you get to uh, live in separate housing for honors students at University Park. You get to pick your courses first, which is a pretty big deal in college. So if you want to avoid 8 a.m. courses, uh, you know, that's definitely an advantage. Um, you have to do a thesis at the end of, the, of your year. So again, this is something that if maybe if you're doing a major related in STEM, um, it might be a good fit for you because it, creates a lot more opportunities to get your hands on research. Um, to apply to, to the honors program, it is a separate application from Penn State. They're gonna ask you to write a few essay questions um, and then their deadline is December 1st as well. And they do have an optional interview for students. Anytime a college tells you to do optional, I always encourage you to do it. Um, this year, more than likely, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be through Zoom. Um, so you don't really have to travel to University Park or anywhere uh, to do an in-person interview. You can just do it from, from home or from school. Uh, so that's the honors program at Penn State. Um, Penn State diversity across all campuses, it looks very different. Um, University Park being our largest one. Uh, Penn State is known for um, having one of the largest uh, student population for international students. Uh, we have different clubs across all campuses, multicultural clubs, Latinx club, Black Student Union club. Um, so that's something that is, is you find interesting and you want to get involved with. Um, you can definitely do that. There's a lot of leadership roles. And then also this summer, President Barron um, from Penn State is kind of taking some initiatives uh, to kind of revamp diversity at Penn State. So I know any new hire at Penn State University for staff and faculty, they have to go through bias training. Uh, I know P President Barron is looking to add a diversity course or seminar for incoming freshmen. Um, they're really looking at the student code of conduct uh, with student leaders. So again, there's a lot of kind of 
uh, movement, ha movement happening at Penn State. Um, if students want to know the specific breakdown numbers between campuses, uh, you can send me an email. It's available on our website. Um, but I just don't know each one off the top of my head, but I know across the university, it's about 23%. Um, so again, we kind of want to make, we do want to make Penn State a welcoming place. Uh, so this can be a very key component to a lot of our students. So 1200 clubs, like I mentioned before, um, they kind of range, right? So there's a lot of interest clubs. So at Penn State, you probably can find a club just about for anything. I know when I started in the admissions office, there was a joke and a rumor going around that there was a club called Bob for students whose first name was Bob. I'm not really sure if that was true, but it wouldn't surprise me. But um, obviously we have clubs like Harry Potter Club, Hiking Club, Adventures Club. Um, it goes on and on. There are service clubs. So the background photo that you see on this slide is um, from Thon. So every year Penn State raises uh, funds for childhood cancer. So last year we start, we raised a little bit over $10 billion across all campuses. Uh, the big kind of final event for this fundraising event is uh, we do a 48 hour dance marathon. So each campus gets to choose um, typically between six or seven dancers. And you go to Bryce, the Bryce Jordan Center for the weekend and there's a whole dance-a-thon for those uh, who are chosen. Uh, but obviously if you don't want to do the dancing, you can just go in as, as part of, of a cheering team. So something that a lot of our students get really excited about, uh, but there's a lot of other type of service clubs that students can get involved. Um, I mentioned earlier intramurals uh, in terms of sports clubs, D1 athletics and D3, and then the smaller campuses having varsity athletics for partake in the, the Penn State University Athletic Conference. Um, but kind of the admissions process, I'll, I'll start talking about that for students, uh, especially for seniors, right? So this, this is kind of the time where, where they start applying to college. Um, with Penn State, it's one application for all 20 campuses. Uh, we are going to need an online application. So that's pretty standard for all colleges. Uh, we are in the Common App platform. So if students want to submit an application through there, uh, they're more than welcome to. There, we're also in the Coalition App. So I know that's pretty popular in Frederick County in, in, in the state of Maryland. So if that's something that you're doing, Coalition App, you can find Penn State there as well. And then there's also the Penn State application. Um, so that's probably the one that I, I really like uh, just because it's one that I'm familiar with. Uh, but also if there are any students with us today um, or that see this presentation, we do waive application fees. So to apply to Penn State, it is $65. If a student attends a virtual webinar, so like the one that we're doing here today, all they have to do is send me an email before they submit an application to Penn State University, and I will explain to them the process to getting that fee waiver. But it is something that we do offer to students in virtual settings um, and hopefully in the near future in-person settings. But apart from the online application, uh, they're going to need a self-reported academic record or SRAR. So this is something that students may see um, if they're applying to any Big Ten schools. Essentially, it's going to replace the need for a high school transcript uh, because we're getting all of that information in this portion. So students are literally going on the application into the self-reported academic record and telling us what courses and grades they receive from 9th through 11th grade and then also their senior year schedule. It can take about an hour to complete. So just as a tip to, to students, make sure that you're leaving time for that portion. Get a copy of your high school transcript so you make sure it looks identical to, to, to what you have in paper. Um, if students ever have any issues with completing this portion, because I know it can be a complicated um, part of the application, uh, feel free to email me, um, but I know at the Mon Alter campus, we do virtual application workshops where we kind of go through the application with students and, and kind of give them tips and pointers on filling out that self-reported academic record. Uh, but that is one portion. SAT, ACT exam score is another requirement that Penn State typically looks at. And I say typically because we are test optional uh, for the summer and fall of 2021 probably something students are seeing a lot with universities and colleges, this test optional portion um, as a reaction to COVID-19. Uh, so obviously, you know, last spring, 
There were college board exams that were SAT exams that were canceled uh, this year. It can be a little bit tough to get into an exam depending on where you live. Uh, so Penn State, like many colleges and universities, uh, has it decided to kind of give students the, the option to opt out. Um, historically, we've always reviewed applications purely mostly based on a high school academic record. So typically two thirds of our decision would go into your GPA, the rigor of your academic coursework, and then one third would have been your SAT or ACT. So um, it's never really been a big part, but for students you know, who want to opt out this year, they, they can definitely do that. Uh, if we have any underclassmen, juniors, sophomores, or even freshmen um, who watch this session, uh, just be aware that Penn State hasn't made an announcement on how we're going to move forward with test optional. Um, so for right now, just plan on having the SAT as a requirement. Uh, but if you know things continue the way they are now, um, there is a chance that we will continue being test optional. That my Penn State profile account is the last portion. Um, so whether you apply through Common App, Coalition App, or the Penn State application, you are going to be prompted to create a profile account with Penn State. It's a platform, it's a portal uh, that you can see how transfer credits come over. So there's a transfer credit tool. So if you're a high school student taking dual enrollment courses, college level courses, you can definitely do it through there. If you're a transfer student, you can do it through there as well. Um, we'll let you or we'll notify you of our decision through your profile account first. Um, if you ever want to change your test optional response before you receive an admissions decision, you are going to see a button on your profile account allowing you to uh, change, you know, whether or not you want to include your SAT or ACT exam score there as well. So it's a pretty useful platform that students are going to get. Um, but I'm going to move forward there. This is going to be an estimating an eligibility, it's the middle 50% range. Um, so if students have taken a stack course, I know I didn't really learn about the bell curve until college, uh, but I'll try to explain a little bit on, on what the middle 50% means. But for University Park, it's a, it's a competitive campus to get admitted into. So last year's incoming freshman class, 15% of students that were admitted fell in between a 3.5 and a 3.9. And 25% of students were above a 3.9, 25% of students were below a 3.5. So it kind of gives students an idea of how the incoming freshman class um, fell into in terms of their GPA. SAT, if they decide to include that, it's a 12 to 1400 and obviously the ACT. Uh, they'll see that the Commonwealth campuses like Penn State Mont Alto, where I work at, a little bit less competitive. Um, and that's just because students are choosing Commonwealth campuses less than University Park. So a little less competitive, but you'll see a 3.0 to a 3.6 and then SAT of 1000 to 1200. So, uh, again, not a bad option. So for students, when they're submitting an application, you'll pick two campuses. Say you choose University Park as the first choice. You'll get reviewed for University Park. If you get admitted, that'll be the end of that and you'll get your, your admissions letter. But if you don't get admitted into University Park, then at that point, we automatically look at you for your second option, which would be a Commonwealth campus. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, there's that two plus two. So if you're dreams are to be at University Park, you could definitely still do it. A lot of students do it through the two plus two, um, but it also will save you a lot of money on your way there. Uh, timeline wise, um, application is live for Penn State University. Our early action deadline is now November 15th. So I know students are seeing November 1st here on my timeline, but we did move it more, uh, again, just to give you guys more of a chance to take the SAT if you are opting in for that. So the 15th of November is when our early action deadline is. It's non-binding, so you can still um, turn down your offer to Penn State, or that I would hope you wouldn't. Um, but um, it's non-binding. We guarantee a decision before the end of December. Uh, so encourage all students to apply before the 15th of November. Penn State is rolling admissions. But if your goal is to get to University Park, the big campus, I would not miss November 15th. Uh, the smaller campuses are typically flexible throughout the entire year and our admission criteria typically doesn't change throughout um, fall and spring for seniors but university park i know that after 15th the november 15th deadline the gpa and sat um, start getting more competitive uh, for students so try to hit that deadline um, fafsa in order to be sent to penn state we want it uh, before december 1st um, so i know 
uh, your Frederick County High School are providing a lot of great uh, resources for students. So, and, and, and I imagine maybe the library as well, as well. So students just make sure you take advantage of those community resources. Um, obviously, if you ever need help with that portion, feel free to reach out to us at Penn State. Um, you can reach out to me at Mon Alonso. We're always glad to answer any questions, especially if um, you know, you're, you're a first generation student and this is the first time your family is kind of going through that process. Um, as long as you meet those deadlines or you submit your application at least uh, before the 15th of November and your FAFSA before December 1st, Penn State will give you a student aid summary um, before the end of February. So I know uh, you probably have seen a lot of presentations today um, where you're watching this on the recording. Um, Penn State sends a student aid summary and it will give you a very close estimate cost for tuition fees, your dorm and your meal plan if you're planning to live on campus. And then it'll also give you any scholarship information that you've been awarded at Penn State University, um, any grants that you've received, and then any loans that you're eligible to take out. Uh, so encourage you all to wait until you get a student aid package from all the colleges that you're applying to um, because you do have until May 1st to accept your offer. So that gives you time to shop around, look around, see, you know, academically, which college is the one that interests you. Um, cost might be a factor, location, athletics if you're a student athlete. Um, so again, just kind of put all those factors together, visit the campuses either virtually or in person. And then May 1st is that typical deadline across all colleges to accept your offer. Um, so kind of moving forward from there, cost um, at University Park, it is a little bit more expensive compared to the smaller campuses. So if you're including tuition, your fees, your dorm, and your meal plan, you're looking around approximately $47,000 for the fall semester and spring semester. Um, the Commonwealth campuses like Mon Alto were about $12,000 less. Uh, so you're looking at a total estimate of about $34,000. Keep that in mind, if you're doing that two plus two, you're saving $24,000. And then also uh, something that's new at Penn State University, it's new scholarships specifically for students that are coming from state bordering Pennsylvania. So this includes Maryland, DC, and Virginia. Um, if you guys apply to Penn State and choose to start at a Commonwealth campus like Mon Alto, uh, you are reviewed automatically for the scholarship that would give you $6,000 per year that you're at a Commonwealth campus, um, and then it goes up to $7,000 for junior and senior year if you decide to finish your major at a smaller campus. So it brings that rate very close to in-state rate. Um, that's just one scholarship. There's a lot of other scholarships that you guys will see for Penn State. Um, a lot of our scholarships for incoming freshmen, you guys don't have to do anything extra. extra. There's not a separate application. As long as you apply um, and submit your FAFSA, we automatically review students for any scholarship opportunities. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Obviously you can bring outside community scholarships, which is something we always encourage students to work on um, to kind of bring that cost lower at Penn State. Um, for any students looking at STEM, there's a really good scholarship called Millennial Scholarship at Penn State University. Uh, you do have to be um, seeking a major in STEM uh, come from an, an underrepresented um, group, right? So uh, women in STEM is a big one, right? So as long as you meet all those criteria and you receive the scholarship, it does cover your whole entire tuition and fees. Uh, so the only thing that you would have to pay is your dorm and your mail plan, um, and you would have to be at University Park. So that's millennial scholarship. If you guys want to look at a website, you should be able to find it. If not, you'll say just Google Penn State Millennial Scholarship, you'll see it. It is a separate application, so just make sure you get on that during your senior year. Um, I'm going to move forward from this cost slide here. Just to kind of wrap it up here with Penn State University brand recognition, right? Everywhere you go, you're going to find um, someone that recognizes Penn State. And actually, outside of Pennsylvania, uh, the location where most Penn State alumni live is the DMV area, so the DC Maryland. Uh, we do have a lot of um, Penn State chapters um, out in that area. Uh, we are top, top ranked in career services, so we're number nine. 
Uh, we have over 800 or 700,000 active alumni across the globe. Uh, so apart from meeting other Penn Staters, you are, it's also going to open a lot of career opportunities for you. Um, you know, an employer might, you know, give you an interview just because you're from Penn State, you know, they can get your foot in the door in many ways, but it creates a lot of resources for students and also for the university. Uh, and then there's also a whole innovation entrepreneurship um, component that we're trying to do at Penn State. Uh, so there's something that's called a line tank, similar to Shark Tank at Penn State, where if students, regardless of major, have a business proposal, they can write a proposal up. If they get chosen, they'll get coached. Uh, so again, similar to Shark Tank, they'll present uh, in an auditorium. And then if they win, uh, there is a money prize. Of course, we've had a lot of, kind of startups happen that way at Penn State. Uh, so again, any business students looking into that. Uh, but that would just kind of wrap up the Penn State presentation. Um, if you don't mind, Carrie, I'm going to share a different slide with my contact information. Sure. Um, and then if there's any questions, I can answer those. Great. Okay, so we have a question. Um, how many students are at the Mont Alto campus? Mm -hmm. So at Mont Alto, we're about 750 to 800 students. So that's typically average class size for a Penn State campus. Okay, and can you speak to um, uh, uh, the diploma? If a student does four years at Mont Alto, they decide not to transfer to University Park, do they get the same diploma mm -hmm. as someone who graduates from University Park? Right. Yep. So regardless of campus, either where you're where you finish or where you start, um, all Penn State diplomas say Penn State University. So uh, we don't distinguish between campuses in the diploma. Um, when you guys fill out your resume or, or create a resume right with our careers office, um, students are told to just put Penn State University. Um, so it is one university just geographically dispersed. Uh, there's no difference in that diploma that they receive. Excellent. Um, can you speak a little bit about what Penn State's doing um, with coronavirus? How, how are you operating? Yep, yep. So Penn State for this fall semester, um, we are on campus. A lot of our courses are mixed mode for students. Uh, so what they're gonna find is some courses are hybrid. So you might be remote through Zoom a couple of days during the week, and then you might have one or two classes in person. Uh, so that's typically a hybrid course. Uh, there are some courses, or there are there, there's it's few of them that are completely in person. Um, most of our courses, like I said, are hybrid. And then there's also courses that are purely online or through remote. Um, we did give students the option this fall semester if they didn't feel comfortable with being on campus. Um, either for health reasons or for personal reasons to opt in to doing purely remote. Um, because Penn State is such a large institution, we have enough courses that are online uh, to kind of create a whole first year uh, schedule or even for returning students. Uh, so that is an option for students to do. And typically what I tell students as well is just keep in mind Penn State has always had a world campus, um, which is currently online. So uh, when we had to shift to remote, um, it wasn't really, a, there wasn't really much legwork for us to do since we had all those processes already figured out. Um, so that's how classes look like. Masks are required at Penn State. Um, even if you're just walking to class, right, you want to ensure the safety for yourself, but also for the community. Um, there's random testing at every campus. Uh, so they typically do, I believe, 1% each week. Uh, random testing based on your campus. So University Park, there's more testing that goes there compared to a campus like Mon Alto where we only have uh, 700 students. So if a student's chosen to do a random test, they'll get an email, um, they have to verify, then they'll get a package in the mail um, with their test kit, they'll have to complete it, send it out, and they typically get a, a um, response in regards to their test within three to four days. Um, if a student were to come out positive during those random testing, um, then we instruct the student to self-quarantine. Uh, so each campus has um, a location on campus for students to stay during that quarantine time. 
until they're able to return back on campus. Um, as of right now, uh, there hasn't been any Penn State campus that has to shut down. Um, so obviously leadership at Penn State has different criteria that they have to look at in order to make that decision. Um, but as of right now, we haven't had to make that, that, that decision to return students home. Um, at Mon Alto, I know our testing you know, weekly, uh, we haven't had a case on our campus yet. So I think because we're a smaller campus or University Park, I know uh, they've had a number of cases up to this point. Um, if students want to see right, the case numbers at Penn State, uh, we do have a dashboard on a website where you can literally look at each campus um, and see how many tests have been done, whether random or um, requested testing, and then also see the results for those. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, we have a question. Are you doing any in-person visits or tours, or is it just virtual tours right now? Yeah, um, yeah so unfortunately right now we are not doing any in-person visits at any campus. Um, I know these are conversations going around with leadership. Um, so right, as of for right now, we're just doing virtual visits. I'm hoping if it's able to do it in a safe manner that we can do in-person visits um, soon. I would probably say from what it's looking like, probably not until the spring. Um, so we understand that it's a key component for a lot of students, right? Visiting a campus, seeing if it's a good fit. Because sometimes you just walk onto a campus and you're, you can say, this is not going to be the place for me. Um, other times you walk onto a campus and you just feel that it fits right. Um, so again, like I, do, like I said before, we're, we're hoping to have in-person visits soon. Um, students are always welcome to drive up to campus, but there isn't any formal admission events going on as of right now. Okay, so if um, a student chooses the Monalto campus, what kind of health services do you have there? Or do you yeah. have health services there? Yeah, so at Monalto, we have a nurse on campus um, for students. Uh, so if you know, that is something that they want to use, they can. We also have a doctor that comes um, a couple days a week. Um, and then there's also a counseling office. Uh, so with counselor, so I know especially during these times, right? There's a lot of anxiety for students. So there's, uh, that's open to students as well. Um, and that's gonna be true for, for all campuses. But. Okay, and what about um, if a student um, uh, needs accommodations, academic accommodations, um, what do you have in place for academic support? Yeah, so each campus has something what they call a student success center or, or student support center. Um, and in this center, they offer tutoring, peer and professional tutoring for students. Uh, there's also a writing center in these, uh, in the academic support center. So if students need help writing papers, um, we're just getting a, a draft started. There's definitely those um, resources available. If a student needs accommodations for class, um, then that's when we ask a students and families to reach out to us because uh, there is a formal pr uh, paper process that they have to complete in order to get those accommodations. But you know, if they need someone to take notes for them, that's definitely doable. If they need extra time to finish an exam, um, we can make accommodations for those as well. Uh, so again, uh, typically each campus has that, uh, but again, if they need extra support and they, there's gonna be sometimes uh, some, some paperwork to go through. Um, and I know that the, the Honors College is very competitive. Um, can you talk about the branch campus honors programs? Yeah, so Shriver's Honors, that's the one I spoke about in the presentation. And students can start at that at a branch campus or a Commonwealth campus, but they have to finish at University Park. Um, that's the only kicker there. Uh, now, each uh, each campus, like Mon Alto, we have our own honors program. Um, so at Penn State Mon Alto, students are reviewed for it. And then if they are eligible for it, they'll get a letter as, with their their um, admissions letter uh, being to be part of the honors program. Um, they get to do a thesis at the end of senior year in this honors program. Um, they get to pick their classes first. Uh, there's honor courses that they have to take at the Mon Alto campus, uh, but the only thing that's not there is a scholarship, because uh, that's what is kind of what the big difference is between the campus honor programs and then Schreier's honors. 
Okay, that, that answered that question. Um, so um, can you tell me a little bit about if you attend a branch campus, are there internship opportunities? Yep, so each campus at Penn State has a career service office. Um, so typically that career service office is gonna network with the local community. So I know like at Mount Alto, uh, we work with a lot of the local businesses, whether they're small businesses or big chain businesses. Uh, so that is available at each campus. Uh, students just have to reach out to us and we would get them connected. Uh, and I know I spoke about that large career fair that we have every year in April at University Park. Um, I know at Mount Alto, we typically take a van um, sometimes a bus, depending on how much interest there is for students, and we drive them up to University Park for that day to be part of that that uh, career fair. Okay, so could, could you um, compare and contrast freshman experience for um, a Monalto student versus a University Park? Yeah, so I think the big one is uh, your class your campus size, right? So. University Park is 45,000 students. You are gonna kind of blend in at University Park, right? Um, there's a lot more activities there, obviously, with 1,200 clubs, Division I athletics. Uh, so there's a little bit more of a campus life, uh, sometimes compared to the smaller campuses, but the smaller campuses, even at Mount Alto, we have about 30 clubs, right? So we try to replicate all the activities that, that go on at University Park. We have our own athletics programs as well. Uh, but we do take students um, sometimes up to University Park uh, for certain activities. Um, so the experience in terms of campus life can differ a little bit, right? So if they're looking for something very big, then that would be University Park if they want. If a student, sometimes I know at Mount Alto will have a student come into our office, uh, maybe more introverted, shy, right? and they know they're not gonna like a big campus, then they find a really good fit at a campus like Mount Alto, um, where it's a close-knit community, everybody's gonna know you, your professor is gonna know you, they're gonna know if you're not showing up to class, right, or University Park, if you don't show up to class, the professors, you know, it's, they're not gonna notice because they have 300, 400 of those students um, in their classroom. Um, so again, it's, it's a little bit night of a, of a close-knit community at the smaller campuses compared to University Park. And so if you attend a branch, um, is there still opportunity for travel abroad? Yep, so like I, I know at Mon also, we do um, study abroad programs to India. Uh, we did one to Costa Rica as well. Uh, we do a spring break, alternative spring break to Canada, which is kind of like a service study abroad program. Um, but even when you're at a, at a Commonwealth campus like Mount Alto, right, and there's a study abroad program with Penn State, say, in Japan, right, uh, you still have access to all those 300 other programs. Um, we would just connect you with the University Park office, and you would kind of follow their process to, to do that program. Now, I know at your campus you have um, some more career-oriented programs that would not be found at University Park. Can you talk about those a little bit? Yeah. So at Mount Alto, we have about nine bachelor degrees and seven associate degrees. The ones that stick out, um, and I think we get a lot of students from the Frederick County for those, would be our nursing program, which is direct admit. Uh, so for nursing students uh, looking for a nursing degree, uh, Penn State is direct admit, meaning that once you apply to Penn State as a freshman and you get admitted, you're in the program for the whole four years. There's not a test that you have to take. Um, to continue at some point, there isn't a GPA that you have to maintain, right? We don't cut off um, part of the freshman class or anything like that. Uh, but with that being said, since it's direct admit, it is a little bit more highly competitive to get admitted as a freshman. Um, but that's a really good program. Our NCLEX passing rate is 100%. Uh, wow. so, yeah, yeah. so a lot of our students you know, might complain that, <laughs> that we, we drive them a little crazy in terms of, of getting them prepared, but we do it for a reason. Um, at University Park, if you do the nursing program there, compared to Mon also, you can choose or opt in to spend a whole year at the Hershey Medical Center. Um, so it's the first trauma hospital. At Mon also, we do have the opportunity for students to go to the Hershey Medical Center as well, uh, but it's typically only for a few weeks. Most of our clinical rotations happen within uh, our area, so within a 40 minute drive. Uh, so sometimes Chambersburg Hospital, Waynesboro Hospital, Gettysburg Hospital, hospital those type of locations, uh, and clinicals typically happen during the sophomore year. 
Uh, but we also have a physical therapy assistant program, which is a two-year degree. Um, we, you can make it into a four-year program at Penn State and also as well. So PTA students, that's definitely a good option. I always can encourage students if they know they're going into the physical therapy route. Um, our program is a really good fit uh, compared to a kinesiology degree, which University Park has as well. But this way, if you get a PTA or physical therapy assistant associate's degree, you're ready to go into the workforce. Um, and if you're thinking about becoming a doctorate in PT, right, getting your doctorate degree, all you would have to do is combine it with a bachelor's degree and you could still finish in four years with a bachelor's degree in your PTA certification. So that's pretty popular at Penn State. Um, and then also occupational therapy for OTA. And again, it's a two-year degree, very similar to the PTA program. Um, if students like more of a psycholo psychology component, to, to therapy, that might be a good fit. Uh, the PTA, OTA, nursing are kind of our three allied health programs. Um, we are actually getting a whole new allied health building at the Monalto campus specifically for those majors. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're hoping to get it open in the spring of 2021. Um, so when students start visiting, we'll see that as part of the tour. Uh, and then we also have forestry technology. So Penn State Monalto uh, was created as a forestry academy back in 1903, um, became part of Penn State in the 19, I think 1928, uh, but we still have that forestry technology program alive at Penn State Mont Alto. Um, it's really popular for students. Uh, so again, if that's something they're looking at, they can do it. And if they wanna get a bachelor's degree, it's really easy to combine it um, with forestry ecosystem management that would have them finishing at University Park. So they would be on a two plus two route. Uh, getting two degrees. Excellent. So it doesn't look like we have any more questions and we're running down on time. So my last question for you is, um, for a student who's interested in applying to Penn State today, um, what are the next steps for them? Yeah, so going out that application, either a Common App, Coalition App, or the Penn State application would be the big thing. Um, submitting everything before uh, our deadline of November 15th. Um, is a key component. I always encourage students to do that. And then also, again, if a student wants a fee waiver, you know, they want to avoid paying $65, um, email me after the presentation or at some point uh, before you submit the application and I'll walk them through that fee waiver process. But uh, they can get access to the Penn State application through our website. Uh, typically, if you go to ma.psu.edu, at the very top, you'll see an apply now button and it will prompt you to create a Penn State account and then giving you access to that Penn State application. Um, and just as a reminder, test optional this year for our seniors so they can decide that whether or not they want to include it. We don't do letters of recommendation, so don't worry about that. Um, there is a personal statement on the application. Always encourage you all to do it, even though it's optional. Um, but yeah, those would be kind of like the next big steps for students to take. We did get another question. And um, it's, can you study business at Mount Alto? And yep. is this a competitive major to get into there? Yeah, yeah. So definitely we have business at Penn State Mount Alto. We have a few degrees that fit that realm. Um, so there is a business uh, marketing and management degree that you could do. There is a health policy administration. So if you want to go into healthcare, but don't really want to do um, the hands-on part, the, the care part, and you want to do more of the admin side, right? You could definitely do that. I know one of our faculty members uh, before coming to Penn State, Mon also worked at a prison. So she kind of managed uh, the healthcare system in the prison, which is kind of really cool. I never really thought that could be a career, um, but that's a possibility. There is information technology. So if you're into, it's, it's different from computer science, but in, if you're into hardware, computer building, network building, right? And you want to combine it with the business aspect, information science tec technology is a really good degree. Um, and then there's also project and supply chain management, which I know is a big area for us here at Mont Alto and also in Frederick County. Uh, so there's a, those are the degrees that you can get at Mont Alto that are business oriented. They're, they are competitive. Um, any student looking at any business program, they want to make sure they have a half unit of trig from high school, which is typically a pre-calc course. Um, if you take calc or trig in itself, it's fine. 
Um, but if you don't have any of those courses or that half unit of trig, uh, apply undecided, we'll get you admitted, and then we'll have you pick up that missing math. And then before sophomore year, typically you will just switch your major to um, that business degree that you're looking for. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eliel, for being here yeah. today. I really appreciate the presentation. It was, it was excellent. Thank you so Great. much. And thank you everyone for joining us um, for this virtual program. This is our last virtual program for the evening. So um, if you want to head over to Facebook, we're going to have a presentation at five o'clock um, from Harrisburg Area Community College, York campus. Um, you can see this and all of our other programming um, on fcpl.org. You can find us on Facebook as Frederick County Public Libraries or on YouTube as Fredco Library. You can also see our team programming on our FCPL team Discord server. All of these programs have been recorded, captured, and posted to the library's YouTube channel and team Discord server. Thank you so much for attending our first ever virtual college fair. Bye. Mm -hmm.